One of the issues which most troubles and perplexes the national life today is the issue of church and state. D. James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. Today on Truths That Transform, we are joined by Dr. Erwin Lutzer. Throughout history, Christians have always suffered at the hands of the state. How do we live as Christians in a nation where Christianity is no longer welcome? We've been accused of, or called a hater, a bigot, every name that you can possibly think of. We'll show you what's happening and plot the path forward on today's Truths That Transform. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. If you look around and see what's happening in our nation, you must draw an unavoidable conclusion. America was settled and founded by Christians on Christian principles, but faithful Christians in America are now living in Babylon. All month on Truths That Transform, we will dig deeper into this, helping you understand what's happening around us and how we should now live as faithful Christians amidst the redefinition of marriage and gender, increasing socialism and hostility towards those who don't go along with the new way of doing things. World-renowned pastor Dr. Erwin Lutzer of the Moody Church in Chicago has written a new book on this called The Church in Babylon, Heeding the Call to Be a Light in the Darkness. He will join us later on this program and throughout this month, and we'll show you how you can get a vital new book of his. As we begin, the one thing that cannot be allowed to happen in Babylon is for worship of the true God to usurp the idols. So dissenters must be punished. It's happening right now in our land as the state supplants God. Here's our own Dr. Jerry Newcomb with more. Americans should never fear their government that would come in and punish them for simply exercising their religious beliefs. But that's what we have. I specialize in um wedding cakes and custom uh, designed cakes. We owned a bakery. Um, actually, it was more of a custom designed cake shop. Um, everything was a made to order. I mean, specifically designed as the customer wanted. We really like to make it very specific to each individual couple. Question, is there a magnet at the threshold of your business which takes away all your constitutional rights once you cross over that threshold? Well, tragically, many Christians in the wedding industry of late have been told that they must participate in celebrating same-sex weddings, regardless of conscience concerns, or they'll be forced out of business, or worse. In January 2013, we had a girl and her mom come in requesting us to do her wedding cake. Return customer. Um, when I learned what the cake was for, um, I couldn't in good conscience take part in it. It was something that flew right in the face of what the Bible defined as marriage. Uh, Aaron politely declined that that was not something they were able to support with their beliefs. And uh, soon thereafter, they found themselves this, the target of a long administrative proceeding in, uh, in, in Oregon uh, and ultimately were, were penalized $135,000 plus dollars. Uh, for, for simply declining some business because their faith would not allow them to continue to do that. Because of uh, the boycotting, the demonstrations that happened, everything that's gone on, we've lost our storefront. We've lost what was our main source of income for our family. We've been accused of, or called a hater, a bigot, every name that you can possibly think of in the book. Um, you know, at first, you know, I won't lie, it, like, it really, hurt and it really hit me hard because it was like, how am I a hater? In 2015, the uh, Bureau of Labor and Industries ruled against us. Um, they said that we had discriminated 
um, against the two girls and they charged us with $135,000 in emotional damages. The $135,000 fine went to the lesbian couple to compensate for the supposed emotional damages sweet cakes caused them. Here is a list of the nearly 80 alleged symptoms the couple claims they experienced because sweet cakes would not bake their cake. You add the damages on top of that that the state could impose and yeah, I could file, I, I could lose my house, I could file bankruptcy, I, you know, it, it, it could, and we're not talking about two people that owned a multi-million dollar business, we're talking about a husband and wife that owned a small shop that supported their five kids. Furthermore, the state of Oregon slapped a gag order on the Kleins, mandating that they could not even discuss what had happened to them. But what about the 2018 Supreme Court decision involving a similar case, the Masterpiece Cake Shop out of Denver? First Liberty is appealing to the Supreme Court to hear the Klein case in light of the Masterpiece decision. We are preparing an appeal to the United States Supreme Court on behalf of Aaron and Melissa Klein our clients there in Oregon. We're hopeful that the Supreme Court will take this case and, and sort of address a much larger issue uh, about the ability to run your business according to your faith, to not be compelled uh, to, to speak a message you know, with which you uh, sincerely disagree, uh, which is a, a broader issue uh, than I think uh, the, the masterpiece opinion uh, really, really highlighted. The hardest thing for me, I think, would be that uh, that I lost my shop, and I lost something that I really love doing and had a lot of joy with. Um, I would definitely say it's been the hardest thing. I had so many regular customers that came in that um, that I built like relationships with, and I missed that interaction with them. How do we live in a culture that perceives our light as darkness? That's the question. How will you respond faithfully when faced with the transgender phenomenon, growing socialism, and false gospels? Dr. Erwin Lutzer lays out a roadmap to navigate these challenges and more in his book, The Church in Babylon, heeding the call to be a light in the darkness. What are those elements that are needed for a church to actually survive in Babylon and not just survive, but also thrive in Babylon? Contact us today to receive your copy of The Church in Babylon. This book will help equip you to stand for God in a culture that rejects Him. It seems absurd that in a nation founded upon the free exercise of religion, where the government is barred from establishing a religion, we now have Christian business people being punished by the state for acting upon their Christian consciences. I'm joined now by the daughter of Dr. D. James Kennedy and my very dear friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. Jennifer, your dad really saw this coming, didn't he? He really did, because he saw that the First Amendment was being turned on its head. My dad understood what the secularists were up to long before most other people caught on. He was a student of history and he could see that the rulings coming down from the Supreme Court and the pronouncements of many of our public officials were totally contradicted by America's founding documents. And in no area was that more true than the First Amendment. He could see that the First Amendment guaranteeing American citizens non-interference from their government on religious matters was being twisted to mean virtually the opposite, that the government could control public religious expression at will under the guise of the so-called separation of church and state. 
When God is removed from government and public life, our rights and our freedoms begin to disappear. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. Here's my father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, with more in this portion of his message, Church and State. One of the issues which most troubles and perplexes the national life today is the issue of church and state. All manner of opinions have been set forth. What indeed is to be the relationship of church and state in this country? We are all aware of the fact that the First Amendment declares that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Now, what exactly does that mean? Today, we have been moving in a direction which attempts to say that that means that religion is to have no part in the national life of this country. Now, it is vitally important for us to realize that the very foundation of America was built upon the concept that we had been created by God and given by God certain inalienable rights and that governments were instituted merely to protect those rights which came from God. Now, if we get rid of the concept of inalienable rights given by God, then we lose the very foundation of our liberties which were established in the Declaration. In 1929, the Communists issued a protocol. And in that protocol, which described various ways in which they were to bring about the destruction of America, they said that the concept of separation of church and state should be, should be pushed to the extremist position that all religion should be removed as the underpinning for government of this nation in order that eventually, having grown weak and flabby and convictionless and fearful, this government might fall. Indeed, we have come a long way along that path. And there are organizations today of atheists and other unbelievers and separatists who would try to do exactly what the communists ordered in that protocol, to get rid of every vestige of religion, to push the idea of the separation of church and state, which of course is not found in the Constitution, that it was taken from a private letter written by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptist when in 1802, which was 11 years after the First Amendment was passed, and it does not represent accurately what the First Amendment says. And therefore, they want to push this to the extreme position and get rid of all of the Christian and religious foundations of this country. I believe that the time is long past for Christians to stand on their feet and say, thus far and no farther. We have had enough with this. God grant that we have not become so weak, so vacillating, and so fearful that we do not have the courage to take a stand for God and this nation's freedoms and our religious liberty and the truth God grant us the courage to take a stand while we still have a place to stand. Under the current regime of secularization in America, it is undeniable that we have lost significant freedom, a heritage that was given to us by our forefathers and that has been squandered. But of course, Christians having freedom is the exception and not the norm in human history. And it is during times like this when God often does the greatest works in His church. My friend, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, is the pastor emeritus of the Moody Church in Chicago. And he hosts a much listened to daily radio program called Running to Win. He recently wrote what he calls his magnum opus, 
And it's just what you and I need today. It's called the church in Babylon, heeding the call to be a light in the darkness. He'll be with us all month long on Truths That Transform. And for today's program, I discussed with him what happens when the state tries to become God. Well, Dr. Lutzer, Christians have literally suffered at the hands of governments since the birth of the church. Augustine talked about the conflict of the city of God versus the city of man. How do you see where we are today in the light of that history? You're absolutely right that Christians have always had a struggle between freedom of conscience and the role of the state. In fact, 2,000 years of church history shows that. Today we find that in America, which really is an anomaly, most people don't realize that. Yes. Throughout history, Christians have always suffered at the hands of the state. And if you think about the Middle Ages during Luther's time, it was the church that invaded people's consciences. Mm -hmm. And Luther did not have freedom of conscience and heretics were put to death. Mm -hmm. Today in America, what we are having is the continual encroachment of the state into matters of conscience. When the children of Israel were in Babylon, they were expected to bow before Nebuchadnezzar yes. and the great image, image he put up. Today we also have a God and we are being asked to bow to it. It's the God of tolerance. And uh, today if you are for uh, life, you are intolerant and that means that you must hate women. If you are for strong borders like I am, you're a racist. If you oppose same-sex marriage, you are hateful and you are a bigot. And by the way, we should be so tolerant, in fact, that we should accept Islam's intolerance. And this certainly is happening in Europe as well as here in right. the United States. Right. So what we are finding is we do still have freedom of speech, but that is being limited, not just legally, but Frank, my great heart is this, the church is being shamed mm. into silence. Mm. We have uh, grandchildren now in college. I'm not so afraid that they will be talked out of their faith. I'm much more afraid that yeah. they will be mocked out of their faith. Yeah. And so we have before us a tremendous challenge to represent Jesus Christ in a culture that has lost its way. Yeah. Let me explain it to you this way. It used to be in our culture that all of our games were home games. The of, people in, in the, the stands, audience. yeah, the yeah. people in the stands were generally on our side. If they weren't, they remained silent. If I might put it this way, now all of our games are away games. The people in the stands are opposed to us. They call us names and they rejoice in all of our losses. So the reason I wrote the book, The Church in Babylon, is to try to answer this question. How can we live effectively and represent Christ in a culture where our light is seen as darkness? Hmm. How do we live in a culture that is clearly losing its way, politically, morally, and spiritually? So it's a great time to be alive, but we need to be able to think clearly about these issues and then ask ourselves, what can we do to represent Christ in the midst of this situation? So tolerance has become, uh, we tolerate them, they persecute us. And the question becomes, what are we going to do with and about that? In your book, which is a, an amazingly timely letter to the churches for the day that we're facing. Uh, and you in your book, you call for a new commitment to the important things of our aspects of our calling. And you make the point that commitment without obedience is not really much of a commitment. Speak to that a little bit. And you know what we need to be able to do is to define what obedience means. Because in evangelical circles today, you have those who say, we just stick with the gospel. Jesus died for our sins. Right. Well, that of course, is the centrifugal force of everything that we do. Right. But we have to be involved redemptively in our culture. The whole culture. The whole culture. And you know, many younger evangelicals, and by the way, there are many of them that are serving God very effectively, Absolutely. and so That's we're true. thankful for them. 
But many of them, for example, have withdrawn from politics. They've said, well, you know, you lost the culture war, and we certainly seem to have lost the culture war on so many different issues. But my burden is many of them don't even understand why these battles are so important. And so what's happening in our society, on the one hand, you have people who are being shamed into silence, and they are quiet amidst all that is happening. And on the other hand, you have those who may be involved in a way that is actually counterproductive because they are not representing Jesus Christ well. And I maintain that God has called us to this hour, to this moment in history, for the purpose of representing Him and representing Christ with a culture in one hand and the Bible in the other and relating the two and bringing them together. Dr. Luther, thank you so much. This is such a critical topic and you've written such an excellent book. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you. Have you ever considered that it's possible, likely even, that God has put you and me here for just such a time as this? It is proper and appropriate to lament the lost heritage of freedom in our land. But we also have reason for great hope. History, both in the Bible and outside of it, shows us how transformative even a tiny faithful remnant can be within an entire culture. How can you be that transformation? How should you face the challenges that we're up against today, from the transgender phenomenon to socialism to false gospels? You just heard from the brilliant Dr. Erwin Lutzer, and he has written a new book, a handbook, if you will, to help you navigate our current difficult time and to do so in a way that proclaims Christ and helps transform the culture. Dr. Lutzer calls it the crowning work of his long career. It's the new book, The Church in Babylon, Heeding the Call to Be a Light in the Darkness. And we want to send it to you right away as our thanks for your generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll free, 877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. This powerful, incisive book pulls it all together, showing how we have become like Babylon, where the Christian faith is unwelcome and where evil is now called good and good is now called evil. But he doesn't just lament the darkness, he also shines a light, providing a roadmap for living, working, witnessing, and changing our nation. The Church in Babylon contains chapters on keeping the faith in a hostile work environment, calling out the cultural lies of transgenderism, balancing compassion and security on immigration, and taking the cross into the world, among others. This book needs to be in the hands of every Christian, and we'll send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation. And if you're able to give a donation of $50 or more, we will send you the book, plus an exclusive new DVD program, Shining Light in a Dark World, featuring Dr. Erwin Lutzer discussing these compelling subjects in his articulate and winsome way. That's the book, The Church in Babylon, plus the DVD, Shining Light in a Dark World, as our thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more. And as you give, you are helping us to shine that light via the Lifetime Channel and numerous other nationwide TV networks, as well as training Christian leaders, fighting back against the anti-Christian Southern Poverty Law Center in federal court, and much, much more. So please write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free, 877-962-7677.
877-962-7677. Or you can go online to djkm.org. For nearly two centuries in America, being a Christian was not only accepted, but virtually assumed. Even those who hadn't darkened the doorstep of a church in years would have claimed some sort of denominational affiliation. But today, the landscape is much different. The number of those identifying as nuns, having no religious affiliation, has expanded enormously in recent years. And on a public level, Christianity and recourse to God's Word is no longer welcome among most of our cultural elites. A number of politicians on the left, like Bernie Sanders, have shown themselves to be hostile towards Christianity. This means that for the first time in the history of America, there is often now a price to be paid for being a Bible-believing Christian. Thankfully, it is not yet devolved into open violence as we see in North Korea or Pakistan. But stigmatization, legal attacks, and governmental discrimination against Christians are all happening here now. So that raises a question. In the words of Francis Schaeffer, how should we then live? For the sake of our own personal peace and prosperity, do we capitulate to the demands of the secularists who order us to be silent on moral issues? May that never be. Instead, with the strength that God supplies, let us stand firmly like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, worshipers of God who found themselves in literal Babylon just as we live in figurative Babylon today. When Babylon's king demanded that they bow down and worship his idol on threat of death, they answered, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedoms. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Truths That Transform. I'm Frank Wright. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. It is so tragic that those that are spiritually dead and blind do not even know it. We are born either male or female. Now, how we perceive ourselves is what some have referred to as gender identity. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.